Running something sexy does not create wealth. Running something boring does. Why are SLPs so important and uh, you know, who's this training for today? So this is the most boring topic ever, right guys? Nobody wants to actually talk about standard operating procedures. But if you wanna get wealthy, these are the keys that you need to do because running something sexy does not create wealth. Running something boring does, why? because then you can hire franchisable labor to run your brand. You can hire virtual assistants and you don't have to be there 24 seven telling them exactly what to do. So I was in China at a circus watching dancing bears when I went out to do some sourcing in the Canton Fair. I could click a couple of buttons and place an order and it was amazing. And over time, I didn't wanna be the guy pushing buttons. I wanted to be looking at the dancing bears on the stage. And you don't wanna run a circus when you're running your brand, right? You, you wanna be the guy that can go enjoy watching the circus, not necessarily participate in the circus. So I built all of these SOPs. I spent millions of dollars building these. And because my brand is about education, I'm opening them up to the community. My mission in life is to level up life so that we can accelerate prosperity to everyone. And that's my mission, right? So that's my brand position. So because of that, I get to share all my trade secrets. And on our show today, I'm gonna give away five free SOPs. So that's why you wanna stick around and see them. So even if you're not interested in buying anything today, you get value today. These are five SOPs we haven't demonstrated live before, and you're gonna be able to take those away for free. If you stick with us, we do have a special offer today, and we're gonna be putting this on a special website just for you guys, limited time only, at myamazonguy.com slash seven fig, seven F-I-G. What if, let's say I'm a seller, I got a VA. Can I just pass this to my VA and he or she, yes. they can just implement this? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so baked. It's going to tell them the how, the why, every step here. So right. by the way, you can see how 360 works. We have it organized. So you got like a little index and filter here. You can type into the search box. So let's, yeah. type, let's yeah. type in CTR and, and boom, we got multiple SOPs that talk about click-through rate. Right. Yeah. So there's just an opportunity for everybody. So diving into the first SOP, these are free. You can use this today. You could take a screenshot, show this to somebody else if you'd like. We're going to give these away. I've never demonstrated this SOP before. You may have heard me talk about CTR in some of my videos, but I've never given away my SOP before. I'm a big fan of this. I get a lot of heat because it's confrontational. It's something that not everybody agrees with, but I'm here today to tell you that the fastest way to grow your brand on Amazon is by increasing the click-through rate. So CTR, that means if you improve your CTR, you're going to grow your sales on Amazon. You're going to be seen more. So if we type in pet leash, right? And we're, we're scrolling through all of these different listings, which one are we most likely going to click on? So Gary, I want you to pick which one attracts you to the most. You can tell me when to stop. Tell me which one you like. Best seller up there. I mean, that catches my eye. So bestseller badge, that is the most powerful thing that you can get to increase your CTR. No question about it. Now, for 99% of people watching this, we'll never own a bestseller badge. So that's something we can't necessarily go out yeah. and chase. But what else? What else do you see? What else do you like? We got we got lots of bestsellers showing up here, ironically, but they might be in different subcategories, for example. I kind of like that striped one, that gray on the right side. Right? Yeah, that okay. one looks different. What do, you, what do you like about it? It stands out. I mean, it looks kind of cool. The other ones are kind of boring, right? It's just like a plain black or plain gray you know yes. like i don't want to have the same thing as everybody else right so it kind of pops yeah i can see so there's other can... color variations like those little see, preview circles color right variations right so yeah. there's our first tos violation people are always talking about oh can't put starburst on my image well clearly bestsellers right here with yeah. seventy nine thousand reviews 21 9 000 reviews you know yeah, yeah. people are doing it they're getting what yeah. these listings have been up for years so that's one thing that i really like you know we scroll down and we see a video with the dog okay that's that's a showstopper. Ironically, this category doesn't use a lot of animals in their main images, which I think is an opportunity for disruption. But we get down yep. here and we see, you know, rabbit go, boom, they put the dog right in there. That's going to get a lot more clicks because people love dogs. As a marketer, when we talk about what are the things you can use to generate interest, babies and puppies are like the one, two Mike Tyson punch. Those are the things that generally gets, generate some interest. Here is how we would actually go in and do it. So 
we're going to look at how to design a CTR main image hack is what I like to call this. What? We're going to update the main image. This should take a couple of hours of design time. Why? Because it can 2x the sales. It'll impact both PPC and SEO. It's going to help customers gain interest on the search page for the product and click on it more often. So when we were on that live demonstration, you heard Gary tell us which ones caught his eye and why. So then we go through this. You know, we include a video. We include a script. We say how long this should take to do. So I have trained my designers on completing this in less than an hour. Now, when your designer first gets this, they're going to tell you this is going to take them four hours. And, and that's normal. But after they've done this a few times, they're going to get it down to under an hour. And here's how that time would look. 10 minutes to go pick out a keyword, 35 minutes to actually do the design by following the SOP, and five minutes to deliver it and QA it, right? So here are all the steps. You go to the ASIN. You look at the search query performance reports. You you decide what keyword is going to be the most important. So here we've highlighted in the SQP search query performance report. This is inside of brand analytics of Seller Central. The keyword Sage sticks, and, and we know that if we put that keyword on a main image. When people are looking for Sage Sticks, they're more likely to click on it. How do we know this? Because it shows up in the brain analytics high up. That's your first indication. It's the first critical step in this process. Why do we start with the keyword? Because the keyword will dictate what else we're going to put into that main image, what else we're going to focus on, and the key features that go with it, right? So we have a bunch of videos where we demonstrate this live, go through the mix of how to go about doing this. So there's multiple demonstrations. You could also do this based on volume instead of the search query performance report. Maybe you're on vendor central. Maybe you don't have a trademark, which would be crazy if you don't have a trademark selling on Amazon, but maybe you don't have brand registry for whatever reason. Maybe it's a product launch and you don't have any data yet. You could instead use a tool such as Helium 10, Jungle Scout, whatever, and look at a high volume keyword that you would find relevant. So ironing board cover and pad would be one option, 51,000 search volume. So here are all of the things that you might look at when you improve a main image, the packaging. So this is usually the fastest and easiest way to get a keyword on the main image. It's just to simply massage it into the packaging. Let's go look at how Thrasio, the bankrupt largest aggregator with a couple of billion dollars to throw around, did it for orange odor spray. Can you tell me what that says? Odor eliminator. Odor eliminator. Now, what Thrasio did, I don't know, like five, six, seven years ago, they bought orange and they watered down the product and they just changed the packaging. Those are the only two things that they did, right? Everything else was pretty much the same. So they watered down the products and they updated the packaging. Angry Orange used to be really big on the packaging. They shrunk it and instead they blew up the keyword odor eliminator. Now this is a product with 120,000 reviews. So if they're doing it, why aren't you? Giant keyword. They figured out that nobody cared what the name of the company was. All they cared about was the fact that it eliminated odor. So they put odor eliminator right smack dab on the main package. They have multiple SKUs all doing the exact same thing. That's how powerful that keyword was for them. That's why they did it, right? So yeah. you can see a secondary keyword they might have ch chosen that wasn't odor eliminator, but almost every single stain remover. That was the only other keyword I could find okay. when looking at them. Put it onto the packaging. Now, maybe you're not ready to update your manufacturing packaging yet, so you Photoshop it on. No problem. we done that all the time. Case example, the Sage Stick one that we showed that first initial uh, suggestion on, here's the before and after. And you can put the packaging behind the item like this, Hidden. even if it doesn't come with packaging, just to get the keyword on there, just to show the three pack, just to show the context. You're never going to get a complaint from a customer. Thousands of times we've done this, never happens. Here's another example. This is my favorite example ever because it's so easy to smell the difference. You're a Chinese company selling baking sheets on the left, on the right, you're you're selling grandma's baking cookies, chocolate chip gooeyness serving to you right now in the oven. You walk into grandma's and she's giving you chocolate chip cookies. That's the difference between these two main images. You can smell the difference. All you have to do is put cookies in front of the package, throw on the keyword onto, onto the item right there. All right, so those are a couple of quick examples as I demonstrate this. Uh, go over to Google right now and type in top household brand names. You're going to get a list like Kleenex, Colgate, Bounty Crest, Energize. 
advertiser. So let's just take Kleenex, for example. Let's go over to Amazon. Let's type in Kleenex. Let's see if Kleenex does this. Oh, they do. They're putting eight package, 960 right there. Some of them are more blatant than others. This one right there, they blow it up. They make mm -hmm. the cuter with hyperallergenic bigger. Let's you know. do Colgate next. Three pack right there. They're showing optic wide advanced brown package that does not come with the item, by the way. This yes. one's probably the most blatant to prove okay. my point. Okay. Uh, let's do one more just because people aren't yeah. convinced yet. HP printer. You can scroll down. You'll eventually find one of them right there. Six months of ink included. Boom. That's super blatant. <laughs> Gary yeah, smile it. Yeah. So we've proven that okay. everybody's getting away with it. I'm sure somebody out there is going to be pedantically reading through the help file to validate instead of taking my word. And I can't blame yeah. you. There's going to be somebody that does that. But I'm here to tell you that the worst thing that can happen to you is an image suppression. Image suppressions can be cleared in less than 10 minutes. If you yeah. test this and have a problem, you're going to know in the first 10 minutes, you can just revert it back. No problem. Okay. I'm not the only expert that talks about this. You can hear from John Aspinall or Anthony, who used to be at PicFu. A lot yeah. of other people also yeah. advocate the same methodology. Even uh, Zule Kitchen is probably even the most blatant one. Let's go over to them real quick. Let's show one more here. I think that they have a lot of things going well for them. There's way over the top. Like we're showing the fruit, we're showing the packaging, we're showing the item, yeah. we're showing the outcome, we're showing the variations, we're showing the pizza. Just blatant all over the place. Yeah. Lifetime warranty on the packaging. They, they don't do the keyword as much uh, on some of these. They went for the lifetime warranty angle you can see just time and time again they, they even have like the frothing splash on that one 20 different color variations there's just all of the big players are doing this they're getting away with it because at the end of the day why because amazon you know it's not their job to police amazon by the way you can probably find amazon's own brands doing this too yeah they're in the okay. job of helping the customer Right, like number one thing you want to do if you're Amazon is help customers buy more products more often for more money. Right? Do customers like this? Yes, we've already established that. Gary's eye went straight to the variation dog leash. So just kind of going through this because uh, we're going a little long on the first one, but I really like this one. That's why we're going a little longer to kind of impact it. Okay, so you're going to add, you know, who's using the product? Banana for scale. So if you can put a kid, an animal, or a person, highly recommend that that gets done. Capsule or pill if you're selling a supplement. Uh, so what what could that look like? Let's Let's go to, uh, let's type in uh, just supplement. Let's see what comes up. So let's see who's doing this right now. So we got packaging. Here we go. Pills on the far right on the, the lion's mane right there. They've got a pill on the bottom left. They've got a pill on the bottom right. There's the powder. So now they're showing the pill plus the powder that's inside of the pill, plus the raw ingredient of the ginger and the turmeric on the far right. All right. So those are the things that can make that pop. Notice how the eye is attracted there. Total clam, same thing. They blew up the pill. The pill's not that big. They blew really? up the pill to emphasize it because it's kind of cool looking. That's yeah. important. Color, accessories, ingredients, a flower to show a scent. If we look at Age of Sage, you can see how we've done that on some of these like that. Quantity. So like the pack of six the Colgate did. A starburst showing the age target. Uh, so we might have that demonstrated right here. So age six to 12. By the way, we changed this main image for Happy Me Journal and it tripled their sales within yeah. seven days. Tripled. We didn't do anything else. This brand didn't even have A plus content yet. Trip Dang. just by changing the main image from the left over to the right. Because on the left, what are you looking at? Maybe a yellow journal, right? But on the Dang. right, you're looking at, oh, this is for kids. Oh, it's a continuation journal. There's some cool things we can flip around in the book. You know, it's not just white pages. Yeah. So that's the yeah. context that can really make a difference. When you think about all of those things, now we're getting kind of lower on the totem pole, adding an American flag if it's made in America. Supplements, beauty products frequently can get away with that. Two to four of those things from the above list? Does it add value? Does it add to the shopping experience? If it doesn't do that, don't do it. Does it make me want yeah. to buy the product? Okay, so that's your litmus test, if you will. Best practices. Can I, can I weigh in very quick? Because I, I like yeah. the, um, the kid's journal example, because for me, this is answering my question. Because if my son is five, you know, I want to see, is this journal appropriate for him or not? Is it for like a baby or is it for a teenager? But when I see age yeah, 6 12, I'm like, yeah, he's like five, six. He's pretty smart for his age. He probably can get started. That for me, I don't have to click through to it. If I'm just like scanning through the listings, then if that's what I need, I think that's, you know, it's more targeted for the buyer. And the difference between politics and marketing. In politics, my job as a politician is to get as many people under my tent. I want all the boats. I want the left boats. I want the right boats. I want you all yep. boats. So let's go to Amazon, type in dog treat. Do I want to see cats when I look for dog treat? No. No. If I sell a, something that a dog and a cat would both eat, I would make two listings. One for the dog, one for the cat, because nobody wants 
wants to see a cat when they buy a dog treat. We just typed in dog treat. We didn't see a single cat anywhere on here, which is exactly what you would expect to see. Now, if I type in cat dog treat, we may get a different approach. We may see something where, where they're mixing things in. Let's see if we can find a product that's got both a dog and a cat on it. So jungle calling chicken bites. This yep. company should split this out. They should do a cat version and a dog version. Even if it's the exact same product, package it differently, right. one right. skew for two. That would double their sales by yeah. doing that segmentation. Wrapping this SOP up, if you will, there's some best practices to do. Make it easy to read the text. Vertical text, highly recommended. Have eye contact with the camera if you're using a model. Add the elements to the box as much as possible to make it look organic. Don't add icons to floating in thin air. That way it doesn't get suppressed. Don't add the back of a package. It doesn't add any value. More often than not, put the ingredients in back of the main package or the side. You don't want to necessarily put it in front of the packaging so you can't see the keyword or other things like that. So it's contextual, but it's not the focus. Keep things simple and large. Don't try and put 17 words on the main image. Two is best. Three is okay. Four is pushing it. Five is too much. Simple, big. What did Angry Orange do? They put two words, odor eliminator, three times bigger than their brand name. All additions need to be accurate. Multiple items come with an ASIN. Mention them as follow. If you know, if you got different kinds, put X pieces, seven item pack of X. Don't use word fillers. Don't use like with or of. Those can be avoided. Don't use reflections. Reflections are really bad. Those get suppressed even if you're following all of the TOS line by line. Never say produced from. And then lots of other like specific. We're, you know, obviously I'm going in high detail because I believe so much in this particular process. I want to get as much value as I can. You're going to QA all of this stuff. We have additional resources that we link to so you can see like other people's lists of, of examples. Sometimes I get questions like this from my designers. They're like, oh my gosh, Steven, this listing is so bad. Where do I start? Take whatever asset you have available and utilize competitor Intel and guess. Just copy the competitors and improve it as much as possible. Sometimes you got to ask for more info. You got to go back to the manufacturer. If you're an agency, you got to ask the client for more info, but use the competitors to fill in some of those gaps. I can't improve what's already there. What do I I do make any modest improvement because you're going to have uh, the ability to A-B test it and, and maybe something modest gives you a 90-10 on the A-B test. You never know. Adding cookies versus no cookies, 90-10. Adding age group, 90-10. Adding yep. the packaging that says all the features. This one's not as good as, as some of them can be, but packaging shot with or without. A real live leg versus a, a model. Showing the celery and the lettuce and the blueberries for the poochie powder. Those are things that can make a really big massive difference. This this one's a lot more on the subtle side. Just got the USA tag and can't really make out the rest of it, but that's okay. So those are all the things. Got a bunch of these examples baked into the SOPs. When Gary said, I want to hear the foundational stuff, one of the first things a lot of people think about is sourcing. We have an SOP on sourcing. We got a bunch of product development ones, like how to identify products, a niche that's going to work, how to do market research, how to do all of the basic things you would need in product development. This particular SOP that we're going to be sharing today is for sellers who are trying to find a supplier. You're going to be looking at all the different sourcing methods that a seller can take advantage of. Here are the high level online marketplaces. So these are easy to find a wide variety of suppliers. You can think about the Alibaba, DHgate, Trade Key, Search by Product Category, Location, and Supplier Certificates. Industry specific marketplaces. So think of Ferry, Tundra, Explore. Most of these, if you've never heard of these, you're a normal person, right? Most of these are very technical marketplaces to find suppliers. If this is new information for you, you've got a lead now on where to go supply stuff. Because most of you just hear about Alibaba and you watch 20 videos about Alibaba and you never get off the Alibaba platform. Here's oh. six different marketplaces we just spat off. Go for it. Drop oh. shipping marketplaces, don't recommend drop shipping, but this can give you some general ideas. Spocket, Doba, a lot of good things in there. Trade show and conferences. I personally don't like trade shows, but I'm also a super introvert that wants to do everything everything from my basement. I don't want to go out and talk to people, but I did go through the motions of going to trade shows that, so I could become knowledgeable. So my, my desire, my high drive to go win overcame my introversion. So I went to some trade shows. I did the, I did the American circuit. I did the home goods stuff. I did grocery. I did, I did a bunch of stuff. And I also went over to China and I tried to go 
walk the Canton Fair, which is basically four football stadiums connected to each other. It's super overwhelming. Not my favorite thing to do. And Gary, you're going over to China, yeah? I, I'm so, going to be in China, yeah, this summer. I used to run the Shanghai Amazon seller meetup, so we're going to get some sellers together as well, do some sourcing as well. There's a high fan of activity. It's yeah. really difficult, like just super difficult. So having SOPs that can kind of guide you through and give you the first questions to ask and can really yeah. be a big jump start to it. Do you this, have templates built into this as well? Like, let's say I want an RFQ. There are some. You know, yeah, there's some sure. templates on, on how to communicate or get a point across, how to, you know, schedule meetings, network, build relationships, tells you exactly what you should go be looking for. Uh, yep. Next thing on the list would be like a manufacturer directory. This is easy to get a laundry list, random locations that people are going to have available. So if you know that you need somebody yeah. that's going to make this one specific item, a manufacturer directory becomes one of the best places to go because then you're going to get every manufacturer listed in a directory. So I really like that. A lot of government resources, online directories are available. So you got like Thomas Net, Compass. Probably one we need to add is uh, the Yeti. Do we have Yeti in here? We don't. So we probably should add that. So I'm going to take a note. We're always improving our SOPs. There was this guy who made a viral post on Reddit about how to reverse source items. Forget the exact name of it, but it's got Yeti in the name. It's like reverse Yeti or something like that. Is you can look up the U.S. government, like customs, they have the import records of that's, all of the, the that's companies what that importing. Guy does. So you just yes. do like a reverse search and then it's not foolproof, but you can see like they imported from like, you know, Shanghai ABC trading company. But there are certain ways you can block that as well. If you need any other suggestions on improving sourcing, because Steven, you know, like my background is the intersection of e-commerce and sourcing. I was in Shanghai for 11 guy. years. I was doing this for 11 years. And I founded 8020 Sourcing in like 2016. I was like, you know, I, I still had hair back then. You know, that was like a young, <laughs> a young chap. <child. laughs> So I've been doing a lot of content. China sourcing. Global sources. If I can just make one more suggestion. Please. Global sources is another good online sourcing platform. They're good for electronics. They're good for fashion, home goods. They have trade shows in Hong Kong, but online, that could be another platform that people can source from in addition to Alibaba. We'll get that added. So we'll have that in there probably by tomorrow. Um, so Absolutely. a lot of different things you can see. We also have videos that we, you know, we list in to demonstrate how to choose the right supply how to build relationships. You don't just want to go to one manufacturer and get a sample and call it a day. You got to multi-source yep. your product. Why? Because you're going to get different qualities. You're going to get different deliveries. Um, how do you, do, you know, how do you look at the quality specs? How do you perform quality control? Um, so there's just a lot of things to like, just having a checklist like this just really opens up your mind to think about what do you need to know? If you only have seven minutes to understand supplier sourcing strategies, boom, this has a very specific checklist. Now, obviously, if you want to go deep on this area, you start here and then maybe you wander off and go click on some videos that we've linked in here to additional resources. Probably need to add in some Gary uh, videos in here too, since he's such an expert on sourcing. Happy to contribute. Yeah. PPC is next. If we're talking about the core things you got to be able to do as a brand, you need to know how to look at your competitor's PPC. So a lot of PPC tips that I, I give out all the time, I talk about negations, we've got an SOP on that. I talk about how to use AI to set up some templates, how to even load a template file. But one thing I've never talked about before on camera is how to check competitor PPC strategies. So I think this is a, a really important thing, can be very beneficial and helpful because if you don't have a PPC strategy to date, one of the easiest shoe-ins is to simply go look at what your competitors are doing and replicate it. 80% of that will probably work and you slough off the 20 over time. Anytime you want to look at what a competitor is ranking in in keywords, what they are standing for. So you can use a tool like X-Ray inside of Helium 10. And you click on this X-Ray button, look at all of the keywords that something is ranking for inside of X-Ray. So we got like handgun holster here. You can use a bunch of filters to kind of narrow it down depending on what you're looking for. I recommend looking at 10 competitors from the list. Don't include your products. And then hit run Cerebro. So that, that'll pull up Cerebro. Rebro over in the Helium 10 tool. In here, you can then filter this based on search volume. Usually anything smaller than 300 is probably not worth uh, starting your core strategy or a product launch PPC strategy. So you might do that. Next, you can filter it based on anything that really interests you or you want to look at. Maybe you only want to export things that five of the competitors rank on or five of the competitors are spending on, for example. You can then hit export data, put it into a CSV or, or whatnot. Inside of this, you can then filter it based on what 
whatever else becomes a core strat for you. And then you can look at the position rank average between the 10, the 10 competitors. So if you want to look at and sort this by the position rank, you can then see that, hey, these 25 keywords have a position rank average of 4.7. And these are the most important keywords we're going to need to make a campaign on. And you can do all this in less than five minutes, right? So being able to choose all of your keywords in less than five minutes, just basically selecting 10 products, clicking a couple buttons, hitting export, that's really, really helpful. And then you could take this, go to the next SOP on how to do a template file upload to create all these campaigns, use our SOP on how to segmently name all of those campaigns and have your entire PPC strategy set up. And maybe you know nothing about advertising, but you know how to follow an SOP, right? So that's what I really like about this. You can, you can tab through, you can use a couple of formulas if you want to get really tricky. Count if uh, this will allow you to filter and make a mag score uh, based on all of the, the components here uh, and then select which ones you're going to actually go to the next step with. So we have a lot of specific things. We have other resources that we rank you to. So like what a ca campaign opportunity sheet looks like, how to rank the keywords, what step to take next, all that good stuff. So a little shorter on the PPC one, because I think it's more of a mind opener than it is specifically anything else. Just the fact that you could use a couple of tools, have an SOP to tell your virtual assistant who's never advertised products before to come back to you and say, hey, here are the top keywords we need to make campaigns for when we launch this new product. That's going to be a big leg up for it. Next on the list is SEO. So search engine optimization. This is something that's really true to my heart because I think a lot of people are upset with how PPC costs are going up and they want to take more control. So the top two things I can say whenever you're doing SEOs, make sure you have 500 words of copy in your A plus content. So let's go over to you know a listing to demonstrate this, what that could look like. You need to have alt text in your A plus content, right? So here's what it's called a brand story. You get lots of crawlable text there. And then I'm going to click this little Chrome extension. This is an alt image alt text viewer. You can see all that that alt text here. You can put a hundred characters under each photo, right? So we got premium plus content, a little harder to get crawlable text like this. Top two tips I can give with SEO. Make sure you have 500 words of crawlable text in your plus content. Make sure every photo has custom 100 words of alt text set. And don't forget some Spanish keywords can be peppered in there. A lot of people forget about the Spanish, super important. This SOP will teach you how to build a master keyword list. So you're going to take 10 competitors, very, very similar to the PPC starting point. You're going to build the master keyword list and construct a back back-end search strategy. You can then look at where you are today, how many keywords you index for today, if it's a, an older product, set a goal and figure out, I want to get to X 20% growth. I want 40% growth, whatever it might be. Generally speaking, this is good. This particular SOP is good for product launches or anything with less than 800 keywords index. Once you've got 800, 1,000 keywords index, you're going to probably shoot over to SEO phase two. After you got like 2,000 index, you might be ready for SEO phase three. And that's like the strike zone keywords. SEO phase four. All of these are SOPs as part of this program. Again, myamazon.com slash seven fig if you want to grab that deal now. Limited time offer, $1,000 for the lifetime access. That's down from our regular sticker price. If you go over to my regular website, we'll be selling that for $2,500. So this is a special offer to the seven fig community with Gary. Back to the yep. SO SOP here at SEO. You're going to identify how to understand what your top keyword is. What we, we call this the seed keyword. So if we look at this vitamin C supplement right here, that's underlined because we want to emphasize vitamin C supplement, most important keyword. Vitamin C is right on the packaging. That ties into our main image CTR hack. And then through this, you're going to want to do this before you make your packaging, ideally. Uh, so you choose the right keyword to do your seed keyword. So you can use X-Ray, click that button, pop up a bunch of these keywords, start searching relevant products with those keywords, and come up with 10 competitors, just like we did with the PPC SOP. You can load some more results. We have a lot of specific steps on this because it's so in depth on like how to do this, how you select them, but you're eventually going to end up over Cerebro with 10 products filtering the list based on search volume, word count, and match type. Apply all those filters, skipping ahead a little bit. We're going to export that over into a Google sheet or an Excel file, and you're going to start to format it and filter it to create a rank. So you can rank these keywords from most important to least important. Some of the ways that you would do this could be how how many of the products are ranking for them, how much the search volume is, and how relevant it is 
to your particular product. We have a mag score that we call it. And you can see here products that have a higher score at the top. And these are the number of products that show up with the search volume. So you can see vitamin C right there showing up quite a bit in all of these particular keywords. So the mag score indicates the count of ASINs within the top 10 products that rank 30 or better with the corresponding keyword phrase and then has a high search volume. We recommend looking at dating things. So we'll have like a date of optimization, trying to track product ID, product name, all of those kinds of things as part of this process. That way you can come back. And if you ever redo the list, you got a tracking system put into place, makes it really easy to compare and contrast over time. You're going to take this exact keyword list and you're going to go export it into Helium 10's Frankenstein, which gives you an ability to delete all duplicate words. This is specifically necessary to set the search term field. Why? Because you don't use commas when you do SEO. You have a run on sentence. When you click on Frankenstein, it gets rid of all the dupes. So instead of seeing vitamin C 17 times, we see it once. And this allows you to get down to 250 characters, which is the most important thing that you do on the search terms on the back end. That's going to remove all the relevant keywords. You can copy and paste that into the proposed search term column in the SEO worksheet. Then your virtual assistant, whoever's in charge of your SEO, can run it by you. And then you can see how they did it. We got a character count. Google Sheet does all the hard work for you as part of this. All the do's and don'ts are on the screen here. We don't have time to read all those today, but there's a lot of them. You can also cross apply this if the search attributes appear for you. They're not showing in many categories in 2024, but we, we show you how to do that as well. And then how to go into the manage inventory page, click edit and where to put it. And then we link to the next SOP for phase two, phase three and phase four. So you know where you're going next. So that is SEO phase one, high level diving into that. A lot of things you guys can do to try and replicate. This is one of the best ways to get a leg up because SEO don't have to pay for this, right? These are earned keywords. Really, really helpful. And do you offer the templates for this? There's templates as part of this. Yes. We got yeah. links to Google Sheets so you can fill it in, follow the SOP. Makes makes a lot of a lot of help. So we keep all Excellent. these updated. So when Amazon changed to 2,500 characters, we updated our SOPs. Next month, they switched it again. It was back down to 250 characters. It used to be 250 bytes. Uh, then they switched it to characters. If you don't know the difference, suffice it to say spaces don't count on bytes. So it's just a, it's an ever changing journey. So last time we updated this particular one was on April 22nd. That's how you know Amazon hasn't changed the SEO policy since April 22nd. We also have other things in here with how to change brand names, how to change UPC codes. So if you guys want to check this out, go to myamazonguy.com slash seven fig. This is going to give you a list. We do show a couple of extra free ones here. So you can see our negation SOP right yeah. there, or SEO phase one right there. Other people in the community, you might've heard of Mina. Uh, yep. He's saying, you're killing it. This is the type of value that makes great companies. James Wakefield, thanks for providing access to your SOPs. There's a lot of gold in it. These are other agencies using our Dude. SOPs to help them out. Uh, so nice car. thank you. Yep. That Lambo got totaled, by the way. I now drive an R8. I didn't total it. I took it in for a big brake pad change. A 16 year old kid bought a used car off the lot and ran into it. Wow. <laughs> totaled it. Ouch. On the lot. Ouch. Insurance paid out full nine yards. Okay. I couldn't, R8 uh, couldn't is not it. a bad second option. <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I switched over to the R8, but, all right. um, all right. <laughs> all right. So again, seven day money back guarantee. If you're like on the fence, you have nothing to lose. Go use it for seven days, go abuse it, go like use 17 SOPs, go earn the money. And if you don't like it, just ask for a refund. No questions asked. Now, all this is available at my Amazon guy slash seven fig. Gary will have links for you in the chat. So that is, Excellent. that is the offer today thousand dollars to get access to something that I spent 2.5 million dollars making uh, and we keep it optimized over time so lifetime access special offer for you guys today perfect thank you very much and I mean who would benefit most out of this are we talking about like seven figure eight figure sellers or people just starting out what kind of sellers There's something would for everybody most? in there if you're a beginner this is going to show you the basics like SEO <laughs> phase one where to start how to make a master keyword list that would take you weeks to try and replicate a process without an SOP that you don't yeah. even know where to start with. Yeah, an yeah. advanced seller is going to be able to take advantage of this because they already know the value of having a brand name change SOP. They already know the value of having a UPC name change. They already know because yeah. they've probably failed to change one themselves, right? So this is going to tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, still a pain in the ass to file all those tickets, still a pain in the ass to try and escalate some of the techniques. But at least now you know this is the try and true best way to do it in 2024 is to go and do this. Agencies are also the number number one purchaser of the SOPs, ironically. Mm. They want to know how to do this 
on the brands that they manage as well. So we're totally kosher to, to sell it to other agencies. So whether you're a first time private label, you got one product, whether you're a multi-million dollar seller, you want some of the advanced SOPs, those are in there, or you're an agency trying to replicate this across dozens of brands or an aggregator, we sell to all of you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Steven. Highly recommend you guys check it out. myamazonguy.com slash seven fig to get the full library of SOPs, you know, everything we covered and a lot more. And also just to be totally transparent, and I am an affiliate of the SOP library. So if you do purchase, I will get a commission. It helps us create the free content that you guys can take advantage of. So I, it's also something that I recommend. Definitely check it out. Thank you so much, Steven. Thanks for I learned a lot. I'm sure our audience did too. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you guys at the next session. Bye everybody.